Dearly beloved, we welcome you warmly to this act of worship where we experience God's grace and God's strength as we celebrate 175 years of the birthday of our diocese. Prayer of Preparation Almighty God, to whom all arts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our arts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Generous and merciful God, we confess to you and to our sisters and brothers that we have sinned against you, against one another and against your creation in thought, word and deed, through our ignorance, our weakness and our deliberate disobedience. We are truly sorry. Forgive us all that is past and grant us the gift for new life in Christ Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins that you may be all the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards all. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, 
Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that seated at the right hand of God, the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Collect for the day. Let us pray. Parent God, who made Sri Lanka so wondrously fair, pour your Holy Spirit on your church, that all the people of our land, being led to the knowledge of your truth and of your loving kindness, and to worship you in the beauty of holiness, may present the gold of intellect, the frankincense of devotion, and the myrrh of discipline to the one who is the light of the world. Even now, Lord Jesus Christ, who with you, the ultimate reality, that you are and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns as one God, the peace, peace, peace. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verses 1 to 3 and 14 to 25. The Covenant Renewal at Shechem Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your fathers lived beyond the Euphrates, Terah, the father of Abraham, and of Nahor, and they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac. Choose who you will serve. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it's evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your father served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it's the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight and pre preserved us in all the ways that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples and the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, but we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves, and you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and put in place statutes and rules, for them at Shechem. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is taken from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. 
Reading from chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. The Coming of the Lord Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 25, beginning to read from verse 1 onwards. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Once there were ten young women who took their oil lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and the other five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take away extra oil with them, while the wise ones took containers full of oil for their lamps. The bridegroom was late in coming, so they began to nod and fall asleep. It was already midnight when the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom, come and meet him. The ten young women woke up and trimmed their lamps. Then the foolish ones said to the wise ones, let us have some of your oil, because our lambs are going out. No, indeed, the wise ones answered, There is not enough for you and for us. Go to the store and buy some for yourselves. So the foolish ones went off to buy some oil. And while they were gone, the bridegroom arrived. The five who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was closed. Later the others arrived. Sir, sir. Let us in, they cried out. Certainly not, I don't know you, the bridegroom answered. And Jesus concluded, Watch out, 
then because you do not know the day or the other. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, November 7th is a day we celebrate the birthday of our Diocese of Colombo. So first of all, may I congratulate all of you who belong to St. Luke's, which is part of our diocese, and congratulate for the great blessings that God has given to us during the last several years. When you take the geographical area, it is about 3,838 kilometers. We do have 10 schools under the diocese and also 121 churches which functions in mission and ministry. Today we celebrate 175 years. Since we do not belong to a province, we are an extra-provincial diocese under the Archbishop of Canterbury who functions as our metropolitan. The Diocese of Colombo is an episcopally led and a synodical governed diocese. What do you mean by episcopally led? What qualities do you expect from the bishop and the priests who lead the church? First of all, he has to be a man of prayer. He has to be who relies on the Holy Spirit for guidance. Before he leads, he needs to be quite sure that he is leading the church into the right direction. This is a huge responsibility. We refer to the book of Isaiah chapter 61 verse 8. For I the Lord love justice, I hate robbery and wrong. We need to be accountable to God and also to his people. In turn the vicars need to be accountable to the, to the people and also to the lay officers who assist him. Secondly, it is a mark of humility that you experience from the shepherds. Today I have served under six bishops. The present bishop under whom I am serving is the last one I suppose and is a seventh bishop. Sign of humility is a great hallmark of a Christian leader. We find that humility is for us to be silent for a while and allow the other person to give their views, to share their way of thinking and to also allow him or her to explain to the various ideas that the person is having and explain the benefits where you can arrive at a concrete positive decision. Thirdly, we need also our clergy and bishops to be approachable and available. Bishops and clergy are people who can never class them as off duty. They perform the duty like firemen who are ever ready to go to the place. We need to be always available to our people given to our charge. We are ever ready to go and serve our people where the need is. It is not a job but it is a vocation by the Master. When we turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 2, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of the faith. Fourthly, no favorites, love God, love all. St. John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 12, it says, Love one another as I have loved you. Bishops and clergy have no enemies. If someone turns to be an enemy or try to pretend to be an enemy, we need to go and win that person over. If as Christians, leader, you do have different yardsticks, you fail in your mission and ministry. Jesus says that he will become our friend only if we can always follow his commandments. That is a condition not a request. The life of a Christian minister is never easy. When you are gripped by God to perform a task, you need to be always, you need to go forward and to see that never to give up in your Christian vocation and ministry. 
I like to share with you and uh, uh, share with you this particular poem that I saw uh, in a certain magazine. It is said a priest is always wrong. If he waits for people, people say he has never been punctual. If he starts on time, people say his watch is wrong. If he owns a car, people say he is a luxury guy. If he does not own a car, people say he is always late. If he asks for donation, people say he is a money maker. If he does not ask, people say he is proud and lazy. If he is seen with women, people say he is a playboy. If he goes with men, people say he is a sissy. If he preaches too long, people say he is boring. If his homily is too short, people say he is unprepared. If he visits homes, people say he is never at home. If he stays in the vicarage, people say he has no time for others. If he is too young, people say he is too inexperienced. If he is too old, people say he should retire. But when a priest dies, nobody takes his place. May God bless each one of us as we continue our journey completing the diocese 175 years. May God bless you. Let us say the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, the God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the Church of Ceylon, especially for the Diocese of Palermo, for Most Reverend Justin Welby, our Metropolitan, Right Reverend Dushanta Rodrigo, our Bishop, and Right Reverend Kiriti Siri Fernando, Bishop of Kuranagula. Our clergy, Venerable Father Dushanta Mendes, Reverend Sirisara Mohoti, Reverend Suresh Pandarnaika that the Holy Spirit will sustain them and the Church to serve as co-workers in God's mission. By your grace, Lord, help us to be an active agent of your love and presence amongst the broken and wounded in society, and may your goodness shine through us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for a world ravaged by the COVID-19 virus. For all victims of the virus, all healthcare workers, and all who risk their own safety to protect others. Lord Jesus Christ, may your healing embrace be with all those who are sick, and may the grace of your resurrection be upon all who are alone and struggling mentally, emotionally, and financially during this difficult time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all God's creation in the context of natural disasters that have caused damage, destruction and despair across the world, particularly the earthquake in Turkey and Greece and the typhoon in Philippines. Let us also remember the chaos, violence and terror that has erupted in communities in France and Austria. Creator God, we ask that you look on your children with mercy. Bless and protect us, and give us the grace to love our neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for our personal intentions. Lord Jesus, you know our hearts and our minds. Bless us in all that we do, and guide us as we journey through our lives. Let us also remember the souls of the departed. May they be brought to the eternal peace and glory of your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we and all your servants, being strengthened together in the eternal fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may with joy behold your Son at this coming again in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. God, our gracious and loving Father, we thank you for these online services and all who are connected to it. We thank you for our multimedia committee, for the manner in which they spend their time, their energy, and their talents. These are God-given talents given by you. Loving Father, we pray for our country, we pray for the world, which is gripped by this virus. 
We pray that you give us healing, loving Father, and contentment for what we have received. And we pray, loving Father, that your divine healing will be upon us in a very, very special way. Father, stretch forth your mighty hand and give us healing, that we may experience you as a healing God. Father, we thank you for all the churches that are doing their worship, to see that they spiritually nourish our people day by day. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. May the boldness of the Spirit transform you. May the gentleness of the Spirit lead you. May the gifts of the Spirit equip you to serve and worship God. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you this day and forevermore.